So I come from Delta Systems Engineering. We're basically just a little yeah. electrical control system and system integration firm, uh, primarily in the Southwest, Vegas, Reno, or uh, Vegas, Phoenix, Irvine, Oceanside. Uh, we're an ETAP system integrator, but a lot of times uh, we use ETAP to model our systems in the design process, but then again, we're, we're brought in to do arc flash hazard assessments. Uh, and so we, we do a lot of stuff, campuses, commercial office buildings, you get little private power utilities that wanna come up to codes, um, little water municipalities, I work for contractors, that kind of a thing. Uh, basically, I've, like you said, I got 11 years experience or so with Delta here. Um, I've been doing this for 17, 18 years. Uh, I've been through the ETAP power system classes a long time ago, but, but I also design, I have a UL panel shop in my office, so we, we deal a lot with hands-on trying to, uh, to and gain the practical aspect of, of this, and I'm a, I'm a safety trainer, so I'll come in and do low voltage and high voltage training uh, for groups of electricians or maintenance workers. So we're going to go through probably some of the ETAP, a little bit of the ETAP models. We'll talk a little bit about them, but we'll look at some case studies probably. We, we've got some major clients that we've done. Uh, but before we get into that, let's that we get into safety. Uh, basically, that's the main purpose behind a lot of this. It's, it's your personal safety. It's the safety of the fellow workers. A lot of times I'll give, I'll talk and I'll be talking to maintenance level workers and um, I'll be talking to, uh, to owners and I'll, and I'll come in and, and I'll, I'll kind of give a, a, a talk on how to comply with the regulations and make sure that, that they're being safe. Um, so, what the, a lot of stuff has changed uh, with the with the new iterations of the NFPA 70E, and so this is, like I said, it's primarily here for the U.S. But basically, we've got the NFPA 70. For some reason the timer's on on these; and they shouldn't be. Uh, the in the 70. It basically tells you how, as an electrician, you got to build it, and if 70A is how you're supposed to work on it, and and then we have OSHA codes that that consider what things are safe, and so the owner has a whole new set of responsibilities so that they've got to alert the contractor to the known hazards. So you've got to give them the arc flash assessments. You've got to tell the workers what kind of stuff they need to uh, to be on aware of. You got to document things. They have to they have to create these energized work permits. That's it's new. Um, they have to, as practically as they can, create the electrically safe work environment for all of their workers. So, so what they also got to go into maintaining the equipment. They got to look in into uh, how to who is qualified and not qualified to work on their stuff. So, so what we do, basically, the, we tell them about the NFPA 70 and what kind of things they, they should be looking at. And OSHA is, is along its Occupational Health and Safety uh, Administration, and, and they, they tell you how you, what is the law, what, what kind of things here in the U.S. you, you shall do, or else you're going to get fined monetarily that's the issue and the NFPA tells them how they're gonna go about doing it and so the it's their mission I, I'm just gonna kind of breeze through this because it's this is uh, their mission is basically to help employers and employees reduce job injuries one out of every 30 accidents that happen in like an industrial area uh, results in a death. Basically, ten one out of uh, one out of the ten. It's usually electrically related, so it's very it's very serious stuff. 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 So um, it's important that that we go through and we ensure that the regulations uh, are taken care of. 
so OSHA doesn't really go directly here in the US directly after NFPA 70E, but what they a lot of times will do is it's a general duty clause. They'll, they'll come through and say you, somebody trips and falls, they'll come through and they'll evaluate your whole system and decide, oh, you don't have your labeling, you don't have, you're not using work permits, your guys don't know about lockout, tag out, you're not appropriately working in, in a safe manner. And so they, you will start, they'll start getting fines and stuff. And so what we do is, is uh, discuss with the owners how to, um, how to bring their system up to, to code. And, and what we, because we all know what the, what electrical, what are electrical hazards, you've got the arc flash and you got, of course you got the arc shock. Um, and what, it, I mean, basically, and then there's other things that caught, make it even worse. Your elevated locations, you're looking in confined spaces, that kind of a thing. So uh, you have the direct effect, the electrical electrocution, a little internal, external burns, that kind of thing. But then there's the indirect, the falls, the smoke inhalation, uh, things that are outside of, of your, your model here. So we all know kind of what an arc flash is. It's the, the flash over electrical current when it finally leaves things and goes through the air from one conductor to another. Um, basically here in the US, it's, there, there's incidents five to 10 uh, a day. It's, it's a pretty, it's in a common, it's dropped down a lot. There used to be a whole lot of them. And with more and more of arc resistant gear, more and more of design features that, that has dropped tremendously. Um, but what, considers what we were talking about a little bit earlier is it's it's there's a human error involved you accidentally touch something you you drop your tools you're trying the installation you install it and it's not quite correct uh, the, they haven't done the proper maintenance on on it there's dust things have fa failed uh, you got corrosion you got water dripping on it and moisture everywhere and so when you're but it, but it can also be interacting. Basically, when the system is designed, it's, it's, uh, it's a safe condition when all the doors and all the bolts and everything are in, but when you're opening and closing all the doors or you're moving switches or operating the gear, you're changing the state in which it's at, and so it can produce an arc flash. Those are your dangerous periods uh, when you're using your tools or you're testing. And so, I, so in going out into the field and trying to collect the data and stuff to produce a good model, you have to keep all this stuff in mind. All of your workers, they need to be trained. They, this is more than just, um, more than just the model. So, so it's, there's actual physical component here. Um, but when you, and so we, we wanna make sure when we go and do an arc flash assessment that we do the, the complete system analysis. You want to make sure that you don't forget your load flow analysis. You don't f because you want to s make sure that your model is absolutely correct. That the uh, anything pops up at this point, your uh, your cables are undersized or anything that's going to tell you, hey, you need to go back and look at your model. Make sure that it's it's correct. So make sure you run that load flow analysis. Uh, when you do the short circuit analysis, uh, I mean, you, you really need to make sure that you do everything, all your different models, all the different uh, ways, scenarios that you can, that's within reason, but then, and then you do your coordination, and then again, you get to your uh, arc flash and your single line drawings. So basically what a lot of times what we'll go out to do is we'll, we'll talk with the owners and, and they want a complete analysis and we tell them and we, we go out and data collect for them. We, we create the models because a lot of the facilities that we, we go out and do, they don't have single lines anymore or those single lines have uh, five or six iterations that only show one component that has been updated in the last 10 years and and it, uh, it, it's really frustrating for when you're trying to put a model together and you can't, 
you can't locate or the equipment is from 1932 or it's it's only available now you can get it on eBay maybe out of South America and and then it's the model is it's the curve is really difficult to locate and and sometimes you're using so we we'll call up VTAP hey can you help us locate one of this before we really start making them uh, trying to make up this curve um, and and so, so you want to try to make sure that they have a complete analysis, they get the proper training that they need, with, that we make the recommendations that they kind of need to do uh, for their electrical system to try to build up their, to fix the deficiencies that we see. Um, so one of the, one of the groups of contracts that we've had recently was, um, uh, was Clark County. Hopefully this isn't going to continue on. The, and <laughs> um, it's, it had about 50 some odd facilities. We did it and it was, all right. It was, it was, uh, it, I'll just talk about these. These things just want to keep going through. Um, Basically, we're dealing with fire stations, we're dealing with courthouses, we're dealing with office buildings and detention centers, all kinds of data centers. We looked at that. Um, all right. We're there. We did a lot of parks. We did so very low. A lot of them was low voltage things that. Um, that, that had never been considered before, but what happened was the, the laws change, and so the, now OSHA is telling them that they gotta have this stuff, and so the main real property says, oh, I gotta, I gotta put arc flash labels on everything. Well, there's a lot to that. There's all the data collection, there's all the different things, and so, um, so one of the, couple of things, like they, they use a lot of this is the third largest county in the U.S. It's it's a, it's a huge county. It goes all over the place uh, in Nevada, and and so they have all these remote fire houses and and things like that, and they use a lot of generators. Well, we had to help them change their policy because they weren't they you can't do live work on l smaller generate while smaller generators are running they will never produce enough current to actually trip the breaker during an arc. It just will keep arcing and keep going and it's just not safe for them. And so, so we had to help change their policy and, and so, and then also we, we've, we give, well, so we'll give recommendations. We, uh, we came into this pool house and they had everything in there uh, had a certain short circuit current rating and we got when it came in the several of the panels weren't rated high enough to go with for the the available fault current that could go there so you're you're asking them all right do you change all the breakers and then you have to evaluate the system and go well upstream of this I actually have a current limiting fuse oh wait this one is as a time delay fuse What's a time delay fuse doing on a lighting panel? And so you're looking at this, trying to figure out, okay, how do I mitigate these, the cost of this too, of there's a lot of, if I tell them they have to change out every single breaker in the panel in order to meet the, the rating on this panel, that's a huge cost, but can they change out the break? Can they change out the fuses? Can they do that kind of a thing? So, so in the models, we're trying to we see something that's wrong and then we have to go back in and reevaluate it to see is this real life do we really have to change what's what's happening um, the the next one here was uh, was Orange County we're doing that right and currently and what we're finding is um, a lot of the places have old gear that uh, some of them have known issues that they cause fires that so so the model will pull up and tell us exactly uh, where where we're at on on the short circuit side of it but then when we look at the the actual equipment 
we have to we have to add that engineering judgment is this we have to do the research behind it so um, and then they want labels and they want a safety and then they want uh, and and the difference is is that they that had started at one point and then now the law has changed or the labeling issue has changed and so we're in the process of transitioning to 2015 right in the middle of the project so so we had arc flash assessment that had category two and three and zero and now they're no longer wanting the category on the label and they're wanting just the the calories um, and so it it really uh, it's been very fortunate that ETAP has been very able to be configured, and so it, it makes me pretty happy that the next release already has 2015 built in, because we're already having to deal with those issues right in the middle of a project. Um, we did City of Scottsdale, we're, we're still working on that. We also did uh, Cayagas, and, and it's, what, what we'll, we'll find is, is a lot of these, um, municipalities they'll, they'll come in and say oh we just need we just need this pump station done or or we're working with a, an integrator to uh, to get all of that that completed and it's uh, it's it's very time-consuming and, and it's and a lot of the uh, modeling and um, it going through all the different scenarios with all the different pumps and how this thing should operate and what happens when it's on, on generators, and what happens when it, uh, what happens when certain things fall and uh, fail, and how do you worry about the time, the current limiting fuses, and how do you get that involved? And so, so having to remodel things with that that have these current limiting fuses in there is is becoming a a, a big issue for us. And then, uh, yeah, labels. Uh, when you're talking, the project has 2,000 labels that have to get printed. It's all right. How do we how do we get that? How do we get all of the data that we need exported out? Looking really well. I mean, it's it's one of those things that, that it, it takes some configuration. You got to think about it. You got to plan that kind of thing out because uh, they don't just get produced. Uh, you can produce the PDF, but you have to choose. You're, you got label sizes, you got uh, different kinds of, of documentation that, that they need. Um, and of course, we got the collecting from the utilities that early on you got to ask for that information, and even late on, they won't give it to you. And so you're, you're pulling teeth and you're trying to model different things, trying to. Uh, so you got to set that expectation with, with various clients and owners. How, this is gonna. This is where the the polling point is gonna be. And then you talk to the owners about the financial risk, uh, about what what it really costs you to do, uh, why you do this, why it comes up. And uh, like I, I was just talking with uh, Orange County, and and uh, I've got them to. We just adjusted their A and E guide, so we got them to put ETAP right in their guide, saying all systems are gonna be now modeled using ETAP because I'm building all these models for them and I'm like, it's, a, it's an investment of your system. It's, it's how things, uh, it's, it's how, when you do updates, you've gotta update your model and get it can, and keep it accurate. Um, so basically it's love ETAP, go, uh, we, we love all the pieces that are part of it. Um, all the single lines, all the modeling, it's our preferred choice. We grab that off of, of your site because I go and I tell, I tell all my clients about it, absolutely, um, and, and really enjoy this. So 